So up next, hi, Lily, you there? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, great. Okay, so, so thank you for being available. Um, so for everyone else on the call, um, I'm going to, we're going to switch gears now a little bit. And this is the, the perfect segue. Um, so part of my wildlife, you know, experience um, has been greatly um, expanded through a program called the Emerging Wildlife Conservation um, Leaders Program. And this, this program completely changed uh, my life because it, it connected me to other conservationists and it, um, it greatly um, accelerated my knowledge of wildlife conservation, what works and what doesn't. And through this um, two year long program, uh, I, I greatly learned so much and uh, definitely increased my frog saving abilities. But that was two years ago, uh, or maybe three years ago now. And now there is a new cohort who we're joined by uh, Lily Maynard um, that is now um, going to be talking about this program and how this program and Save the Frogs are actually working together. And I'll leave it with you right now, and then we can share your presentation. So let me know when you want me to get that started. Great. Thanks, Michael. And I'm thrilled to be here. I don't know if you guys can see me. I mostly see Michael right now, but I'm figuring this out. Um, like you said, my name is Lily Maynard, and I'm thrilled to be the representative for a team of conservationists that are working on a new project for amphibian conservation in partnership with Michael and Save the Frogs. And so we're really excited to be halfway through our cohort with this Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leaders Program. And I'm excited to be able to start the launch and promotion of a project that's going to be rolling out later this year and hope that everyone watching or people who are going to watch this video later might find some interest to join us in the work. So, um, Michael, I don't know if you are the one in charge of sharing screens. I, actually, so you'll see that you can share your screen. Okay. Um, and it should be able to go. Um, yeah, and if there are any questions, do you want me to let you know or do you want to answer questions at the end? Um, it might be easier to answer at the end, but I, honestly, it's informal. So anyone, if you have an, a, a question or an idea that comes up along the way, feel free to shout out. Okay, great. I'll watch the comments and yeah, thank you so much. Of course, thanks for having us and having me to represent the team. Um, I'm, I shared the screen. Does, can everybody see it? Can you see it, Michael? It looks great, yeah. Great. Well, like I said, I'm excited to represent a team of conservationists with the Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leaders Program. Our project is looking at how F is for frogs in decline. That's our play on words for thinking about the failing grade that some frogs and amphibians are having as they are becoming more and more endangered. So we are developing a project to engage new audiences, which we're calling the Amphibian Report Card. But first, just so you understand, um, I don't know if I should minimize. Can, can you see it all now, Michael? Yeah, um, it looks good. Okay. Um, first, I want to introduce what is Yuko. Like Michael said, he was in the last cohort. I'm in the current cohort for the Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leaders Leadership Training Program. It's for current professional conservationists to gain new skills and abilities to increase their confidence and skill sets for promoting and creating new conservation projects. So my team of six people, we're all working on an amphibian conservation project that's all new to us. And we're coming from diverse backgrounds and varied locations as well. Most of us are located throughout the US, but we also have a team member all the way in Rwanda. So it makes it really fun and diverse to have so many different people working with us to figure out and how to contribute to save and support imperiled amphibians. We have very different backgrounds and professional um, interests, but we're really excited to be working on this project and as a part of the Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leaders Program, or UCL. I'm trying to go to the next slide and it's not there. Um, so, Yukul is also, this project is also happening in, through a collaboration with several partners and funders, including Save the Frogs, hence why we're participating in this webinar today, where I'm excited that we get to be a part of it to sh first be the first time that we launch and start talking about this effort. We're also partnered with the Foundation for the Conservation of Salamanders. 
And the scope of our project is looking at how we can support amphibians across the board in the US. So I'm really excited that we have two complementary organizations that are helping us gain the expertise and relevance and work on this project with Save the Frogs and the Foundation for the Conservation of Salamanders. Our work for this project also includes getting expert input from several different amphibian researchers and conservationists and organizations. And it wouldn't be possible without the generous support of the SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund. So I just wanna thank them as well for making this project happen. When we started this project a year ago, we realized that and observed a problem that we thought we could try to help. We noticed that a lot of, and most conservation efforts are zoomed in and focused on single species or regions, or even just a pocket of a population of a species. And while that very on the ground context is important for having big impact, we wanted to know if we could look at a broader scope and have a larger opportunity for bigger impact to address the issues that are happening across amphibian species. When we look at that, we see that there are a lot of efforts that are focused on those single species or regions, and thus a lot of very limited reach for how people get engaged in the projects. And so then there's a disconnect between the research and how the public get involved, or it's unclear how the public can get involved for these broad issues, but and broad threats, but very limited or singular projects. So we wanted to find a way to connect and increase connections between different projects through looking at how threats are the same across species. We also noticed one other problem that the, the public and public audiences are often disconnected with so many amphibian species and their organizations and researchers demanding attention or asking for help it can be very overwhelming for the public and that can lead to a big barrier for people getting involved. So we wanted to figure out a way to connect across experts and organizations for the threats that they are face and provide a way for the public to get involved. So we asked ourselves, how do we zoom out? How do we look at issues across the US and connect the public to these urgent needs for the amphibians? And we wanted to really be sure that we would meet the public where they are and use language that is understandable to them rather than forcing public audiences or people who are just a little bit interested to become scientists because that could be another barrier that can prevent people from getting involved. We wanted to find also action opportunities where people can feel that they're making a difference rather than just think finding more information. We wanted to really connect ways people can join in and help take action for amphibians. So these were the big goals that we came up with when we started this project. And I'm really excited we're making progress in bridging this gap by creating a new website that's in the works right now called the Amphibian Report Card. The purpose of this project is multifaceted. We are, like I said, we really, first of all, are trying to educate public audiences about the plight of amphibians and how urgent the need is to get involved, but we're really directly connecting that with engagement opportunities and advocating for people to get involved and active on behalf of amphibians. But additionally, to this public um, engagement, we want to also be engaging experts on their species and providing an opportunity for experts to who may work on the same species in different areas to have a new framework for potential collaboration and cohesiveness. With that, the website will be an opportunity for some data sharing and primarily data translation into clear, communicable, understandable language so that people can understand what's happening for different species and linking that to how we can then prioritize mitigation which means just how do we get involved to start to reduce those threats. And by using clear and understandable language, we want to make the information and knowledge that we have that scientists across the board have about their species or are working to get more accessible to everyone in the public. So that's the solution that we're trying to tackle. How do we have clear communication strategies and how do we get people involved? 
the first question we asked ourselves is what are the magnitude of each threat to various species? And that's where the report card comes in. So I'm excited to share that with you. And just like those multifaceted uh, purposes for the projects, we have multiple audiences who will be included in this website. Primarily or firstly, there will be the experts on different species who can get involved in the website and to start to help us understand what is the status of the species that they spend their time working on and where is there room for conservation support for them. But that follows up with several new audiences who might find some interest in learning about the species and also be excited about the clear opportunities for getting involved. And that includes students and educators, as well as advocates and policymakers. Really, conservationists in organizations across the board will find this website hopefully interesting. We're excited to share it with them. And we're trying to make it with an understandable language that anyone in the public would be able to understand. There are a lot of websites out there that talk about amphibians, but we're trying to have a new angle that looks at clear language that talks about threats and actions. And I think that can be relevant to all of the audiences in the public. When we started this project, we had to come up with an action plan of what are we really doing and how are we going to be able to say that it helps rather than just putting out some new posters or a new website with some information on it. We, would, we wanted to challenge ourselves to make sure that if this builds correctly or the way we intend, then it will lead towards healthy populations of amphibians in the US. So as you can see, following this simple results chain, if we create an effective amphibian report card website. We hope to first increase awareness of the website and thus users on this website, but all that will lead to an increased awareness of the specific threats that amphibians face down to the specific ones that are, affect different species. And then that can be followed by an increased public interest in taking action for amphibian conservation which might and hopefully will lead to increased actual public action for amphibian conservation. And so that will then reduce the threats that amphibians in the US face, which will hopefully lead to more healthy populations of amphibians in the US. And so that's the plan we came up with and we're excited about it. And I'll wanna dive more deeply into what the website involves. The website format, includes right now that you can see the logo up on the left the amphibian report card website and on the website we will be able to search for different species and look at the current status of the threats that they face and they get every species gets a report card and so based on how severe the threats are they might get a, a worse and worse grade they are color coded but they also you have the language like major threat is much worse than secondary threat. And I'll dive into that soon. We can also see some overarching information about amphibians on the website, as well as looking at the six major threats that amphibians face. Down on the bottom left, you can see the major factors driving the global decline of amphibians are the ones that we are focusing on for our report card. Also, the website involves an important feature that experts and researchers working on different species can log in and update the information about their species in order to keep it up to date and as accurate as possible based on their most recent findings or based on hopefully positive turnout for if more people get involved those species statuses will improve and so their grades will also improve. The major features of the website um, include the report card for each species where we identify one of the all of the six major threats and give a grade for each and then we link those to mitigation options that anyone can get involved in such as community conservation or related conservation projects or in events different work of different experts and organizations who are working on these species we can highlight the current work of the experts who log in and share the information that they have that's the most up to date and also use that as a action opportunity for other people in the same area to start to get involved. One major emphasis we really have is that you don't have to be an expert to really use 
our website, it's going to be clear and understandable using color coding and grades. And so looking a little more deeply at the grades, like I said, there's six major threats that we're focused on, habitat loss, climate change, pollution, over harvesting then trade, invasive species, and disease. And each of these, for every species that, of amphibian, will get a grade. And you'll see that they'll be color coded like they are on the right, and they'll be given a, le a letter, just like we get on our grades or report cards growing up. And so no matter who you are, we can understand that an F is very different than an A. And so depending on if there's a major threat or a secondary threat for one species, those can then identify the areas that need help for that species to help them turn around and get better grades. So that, yeah, those are the action opportunities that we need to find to support the species. In order to develop the report cards, we need expert input, and that's what we've been working on recently with what we're calling is the amphibian report card generator, or a simple series of questions that help us understand the status of species, rather than digging through research articles or bothering every expert for long interviews. We have a simple series of questions that we're asking to be able to understand what is the, th the status of climate change and proje projections affecting your species that you work on, or invasive species, or pollution, all through the six different major threats. And by talking with the experts with this simple generator series of questions, we can get also the action opportunities that they see is most accessible for the species that they work on. And then we can have a better understanding of uh, how to create an accurate report card for that species based on what the current experts who directly work with that species say. We're also getting a lot of help from experts just around creating the website how we're creating these outreach methods, how we've designed the graphic design and logos and the threat logos, as well as the development of the structure of the website. So we've really depended on a lot of generous experts helping us along the way. And if any of you out there listening are working on a species that you might consider having added as a report card to our website, I'll be coming up with more ways to do that later in the presentation. So please keep us in mind. But by talking to experts, we've really started to dive into understanding more about the issues that amphibians face, looking at exactly which threats are the most common ones that come up for their work, and thus which ones we should focus on in our report card, as well as what, which regions of the US are the ones with uh, a lot of species that we should consider including for the report card, as, and understanding on how much expertise the people we are talking to have. <clears throat> um, we also wanted to get people who were willing to help us with this. We don't want to harass people to get involved, but if you're interested and want your organization to be highlighted and the species that you work on get new support and new audiences involved, then we ask for those people who are willing to join us. Here are a few species that we're currently considering for the project. California tiger salamanders, Houston toads, Oregon spotted frogs, also dusky gopher frogs, Shenandoah salamanders, and hellbenders. We're trying to pick species that are all in different regions so that we can really have a breadth of species across the US. So if we look at one example, let's look at an example report card for hellbenders. This is what the top of a report card would look like. And you can see hellbenders aren't doing very well. They have an overall grade of a D. It's not so good. And dark orange isn't so good either. So let's look a little deeper and understand why. <clears throat> For each of the six threats, you can see what grade they get. Red of the major threat is the worst. That's an F. <clears throat> and then the others are all secondary threats uh, or a D. So on average, you can see that's why they got an overall score of a D, but hellbenders need help. And if you are logging into our website and you're interested in hellbenders, you live near the region that hellbenders live in, we can start to dive into the, via this report card structure, you can start to understand what are the major drivers or things that are causing this threat in that area where you live. And we can also see where it says conservation action and partners that's where we get to highlight different 
specific organizations and work, such as down in the bottom left, where it says there's a captive breeding program at the St. Louis Zoo, maybe there's a volunteer opportunity to get involved because once they breed them, they need help going out into the area to release them and out into the freshwater rivers to start providing opportunities for getting these captive bred animals out there. So that's just one example, but you can get a feel for what the major features of a report card might look like. Also, at the bottom of the report card, we'll include some of this information that people would find interesting if they get really intrigued by a species, such as about their population, the status of their habitat, other features of their natural history, and other major conservation challenges. This is, the ma this is commonly the features that are highlighted on other amphibian websites. But rather than having this at the top of the page where you see it first, we didn't want to lose people because we aren't sure that's the best way to engage. So we're excited that instead we have this clear report card for each of the threats that's color-coded ways of giving grades. We hope you like it too because we're really excited about it. But after looking at those six threats and their scores, we then have links to take action. Just like there was a major threat for one of the threats for hellbenders, we want to then link that to opportunities where anyone can take action and help mitigate the threats to support amphibians. So just like you can see on this page, different ways we can get active and help these species. So let's look a little deeper at some of those. Anybody can support amphibian conservation and we wanna create this project to help share that share those opportunities and inspire anyone to get involved. First, for example, people can get involved via citizen science. Amphibian researchers really do need help. There's things like frog, frog watch or different roadkill surveys. I've heard of projects help, having people help salamanders cross roads so that they don't get run over. There's many different opportunities where you could get involved and all you have to do is use our website once we launch it in a few months and see what is in, happening in your area so that you can help those species. Additionally, there are other actions we can take, such as reducing chemical use. Pesticides on your lawn. In the wintertime, if you live far up north where it freezes, salt on the roads can really build up over time, over months, and that can affect the environment for amphibians. Even the chemicals that we use in our household items might get into our waterways and thus affect amphibians. So that's a simple thing we can consider in how we make decisions every day. My apologies, Lily. Let me get you set back up. It's okay. Okay, please share your screen again. I'm so sorry for that. No worries. Any questions along the way, everybody? Nope, okay, I'll keep going. Is it sharing? No. There. There you go. Sorry about that, thank you. No worries. Another way that people can get involved is conserving and protecting clean water, just like reducing chemicals does this, but also things like medicines. If you flush those down the toilet, they don't just disappear. They get diluted into water and that really can affect all, all wildlife in our environment, including amphibians. Also reducing how much water we use really is important when we consider how much amphibians depend on water and the more we use the more it's being taken from somewhere else where they might be affected. A couple more actions we can think about that we're really going to focus on in our website is supporting policies and legislations that might help amphibians and signing so you could sign up for alerts if you have local issues or local decisions that are being made in your area that could be affecting the environment or state parks or city parks or even national parks in your area that have endangered amphibian populations and thus need your support. Finally, we really want to emphasize how invasive species, including people's pets, can be really negatively affecting amphibians because these invasive species sometimes eat amphibians or compete with them and they hurt those native populations or just the environment that the endangered amphibians depend on. And so those are other things that we need to consider as when we take action to support in general all amphibians. In addition to these general actions, when there's a specific opportunity to get involved with an organization, 
who's doing something like a cleanup of a wetland nearby to directly help a species in need, we will hopefully be able to advertise that on our website when we link to the organizations doing the great work for that species on that species report cards. We've had a few challenges along the way because we're new. We're new at creating websites and getting to know amphibian issues. So we're learning all along the way. And that's the point of us being involved in this project with the UCL program. We are learning about how we can raise awareness about the report card and promote this website. And that's why we were so excited to be involved in this global webinar summit to be able to share this work with all of you. And we're hoping to be able to reach more experts and get more people involved so that the website can be sustainable, can continue to be updated so that it's really up to date and really clear that we're have, we have understandable information that uh, can engage people to get involved. We're also working through the design of the website and funding, but we are making progress and really looking forward to in the next few months by the fall, we will have launched this website. So like I said, the next steps were creating and preparing report card metrics and data. We, I showed you the example of the Hellbender, but we're working on getting more website, more report cards ready for our website. And we want to start promoting the website, developing those pilot report cards and working with our partners to really vet and improve all of the website before we eventually launch it. And so with that, we have an ask for any of you species experts out there, researchers, conservationists, hobbyists who work very in depth with their species. If you're willing to share your expertise on any of the species that you work on in the US, we would love to hear about them and consider them for a report card for our website. It's a simple website link that you can type in to get to our survey link. It's just bit.do forward slash frog grades. And like I said, why would this be good for you? Or what's in it for you? If you are a researcher or conservationist working on a species project, we could make a report card to highlight your work and your species. Just like it says right there, your organization could be here. We would be able to include information about what your organization is doing and how much this species needs support. And we'll link this if, if you'd like to your website or anything to be able to better have a, a connection between organizations working on species and engage more and new audiences with your projects and your important work. So like I said, if this sounds at all intriguing to you, please consider going to bit.do forward slash frog grades. And you can tell us about the current status of your species to the best of your knowledge. And then feel free to share the link with any of your peers so that we can have enough information of the input of a few experts to be able to be sure we know that and confidently uh, trust the accuracy of what's going on with that species from a few different perspectives. But anyone can be involved in the website as well because we're wondering if you'd like to stay involved and stay in touch and hear when we launch the project. And we'd love to be able to share with you when it finally is launched and you can check out those beautiful report cards that we'll be creating. And to do so, if you could send us an email with your contact info, our email address is amphibianreportcard at gmail.com. So feel free to shoot us an email if you have any questions or if you have ideas of who we should get in touch with for generating report cards, we'd love to hear from you. Again, our email address is amphibianreportcard at gmail.com. And just wanna say thanks. Thanks for letting us share their, our project. This is us, a group of six of us working on this project. Also want to thank Michael for his support and inspiration for working on this. Also want to thank David Mizajewski, who's our mentor and project advisor. And thanks again to the different organizations we're working with, Foundation for the Cal Conservation of Salamanders, Save the Frogs, of course, the Eucal Program, the Taproot Foundation, who's helped us with love development, and SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund, who's funding this and helping it take root and mo move forward. So thanks, everybody. Do you have any questions, anyone? Yeah, thank you so much, Lily. That was uh, very enlightening and it's a very cool uh, project. 
Um, I believe uh, Margot had a question. So will you be connecting us with local researchers who need help or do we have to find them for ourselves? Well, thanks for asking, Margot. I think the, definitely the point is that if there are local researchers who need help, they can use this website to share what they need and then we can help you get in touch with them. And so when those researchers help us develop a report card, they can also say, and I need help with a wetland cleanup here or doing a little bit of research on this date or this field season. We really would love to make those connections for you and that would be a, a really great need that we'd hope this website would fill. So if you're interested, Marco, feel free to shoot us an email and we can be sure to um, get in touch with you for action opportunities or anything. Thanks so much for sharing this, our website with researchers or anyone you know. We'd really like uh, to share and make sure people know about this and start to use it because we're working hard to make it as user friendly and also relevant to both researchers and the public. And a big uh, shout out because this, uh, this idea was spawned from a, a program called the Save the Frogs Task Force. And uh, Save the Frogs Task Force member uh, Brian Hatch had this idea. Um, and so what started as, you know, a very kind of thrown together concept for a Save the Frogs program has really blossomed into this uh, really just cool project. And uh, that hopefully will be utilized as a resource for amphibian conservationists, but also for, um, you know, anyone that's interested in frogs in general. That's what we're hoping and we're getting really excited that the project's building up some steam and we're um, getting all the content ready to launch it by the fall. And so if anybody wants to set, shoot an email to us or be, keep in mind the, that we will be launching in the fall and we'd love to share it with anyone who's interested. Great. Okay. So does anyone have any other further questions for, for Lily? I just want to thank you again, Michael, for the inspiration and for this project and being our mentor or partner in getting this going. It's been a lot of fun. It's been challenging, like you know, and we're <laughs> learning along the way. And so it's been a great opportunity. Oh, it's been a great opportunity for us. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, and sharing this really cool thing with us. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Okay.